zero. Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Public Infrastructure Weekly Meeting. Today we are the 17th of May 2022. Let's get started. Today we have Stéphane Merle, Mark Waite, Hervé Lemeur, Bruno Verarten, and hi Damien Duportal. Let's get started with announcements. Uh, first of all, we had a security advisory successfully published. Um, everything went smoothly. At least uh, we were able to, to help the team. We opened the status Jenkins IO and CI went down. No issue whatsoever. So uh, we have to still gather feedbacks from the security team if they saw anything that we could have done to improve. On our side, I've noted one feedback. Uh, none of us, and I include myself, talked about opening uh, a message on CI Jenkins IO uh, beginning of the day, despite we had the invitation. Uh, so I did it directly on the main, but we all forget about that. So that's an improvement for ourselves. Next time there will be a security advisory. We should be able to open, eventually have a branch, a local branch. That's not a bad thing though, because since it's security advisory, we should restrain from publishing anything. So I'm not really sure about the stance of the security team on that array about, is it okay if one day before we open a mention that we will have a maintenance window on CI Jenkins IO with no further operation? And I think it's okay with them because they've already announced it by that point that the advisory will be published. So the fact that it will be published is already public knowledge by that point. Therefore, publishing a maintenance window is just restating that what they've already said publicly, that there will be an advisory. Okay. That might be a discussion to have with them because that could be a bullet point on their checklists when they start checking with the infra team that the status Jenkins IO must be updated with the risk of slowing them down if we are not available. However, uh, they could also be autonomous on that part if we have a run book, so if we'll them on that point. Mm, right. That's balance to find, what do you think? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it went well. Uh, CI Jenkins IO and Trusted are already up to date. Uh, uh, for the Kubernetes upgraded, the image is currently being built. Second announcement, uh, weekly release. So published successfully. Need the release checklist as usual. Uh, no issue whatsoever. I restrain from merging anything this morning. So. <laughs> Thanks people for mentoring me. <laughs> Are there other announcements on your sites, folks? Nope. Uh, okay. Oh, actually, yes, one more. Google mm -hmm. Summer of Code, Google Summer of Code um, project selection will be announced this Friday, uh, the 20th. We I hope know. that Jenkins will be selected as a project. We firmly believe that we should be selected. Uh, but it's it's not not known until they state it publicly, and we're not allowed. Even if we were to know, we're not allowed to announce it in advance. It's theirs to announce. They're funding it. We should let, uh, be sure we honor their right to announce when they wish. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's cross fingers. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mark. So let's get started on the notes for today. Um, first, the work done during the past iteration. So by done, we mean closed and delivered. Uh, the migration of rating Jenkins IO to uh, Azure uh, is totally finished. The last pieces were documentation and deleting the database, uh, the old database on, uh, on uh, Amazon. So thanks, Stefan. Um, as per Basil analysis, it wasn't a huge and prior improvement, but still we were able to improve the random number generation on the virtual machine that we are hosting, especially for CI Jenkins IO. Uh, thanks, Stefan, for taking care of that part. Uh, I've checked on my sites uh, and put reports on the issue. All the Kubernetes hosted controllers have everything that it needs because 
the machines and we use the default underlying machine. So we trust the cloud provider to provide us good, good default setup, which we didn't on our own machines. So thanks Basil and Stefan on that area. Uh, we had a bunch of day-to-day uh, -day, uh, administrative tasks, such as maintaining uh, GitHub teams, helping uh, other contributors to have repositories for different projects. Uh, one notable change was we are now managing crowding incoming requests through the LDesk. So thanks a lot, Hervé, for uh, dealing with that and for putting all the automated tooling to help them, because it means not only us benefit from the LDesk, but also the others. It's a work in progress. Yeah, but that means that triggered the interest of other people. So it's a good tool for uh, sharing visibility on a single location. Clearly, it's a huge improvement. I valid the uh, suggestions also for uh, Alex and you, Mark, uh, on, it, on his uh, pull request in the repository uh, um, RPU. Nice. Um, Sounds like there has been an artifactory issue. I was off this day, so thanks, Fault, for managing this. Uh, the issue was closed. Do you have any feedbacks, announcement, thing we could improve on that area? Still uh, have the uh, their status update uh, published in Ablesk could help. I have yet to find a way to do it properly, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Seems like we still have the issue of uh, only me is able to send them uh, email. So until we solve that issue with Gfrog, that's I hope they will start doing that because that start to be a bit worrying. Um, I propose that don't hesitate to call me on my phone number in such cases because it's only an email for me. So unless I really don't have any data cellular, even if on holiday. That's a temporary situation. So next time, do not hesitate uh, if you feel like that it's necessary. Sounds like Tim was able to handle it by spamming them on different uh, threads, email threads. Works well. So let's continue doing that, but don't hesitate on that area. Um, question, because it's also uh, it's a war, it's, it's one of the other tasks around Datadog. Stefan, you worked on fixing first the synthetics test we have on Datadog, one subset of our monitoring. Thanks for that. And you, we, you were able to add a monitoring probe on, that, on this new synthetics test on uh, the UI of Chiefrog. Uh, were you able to check if it failed and well, what yeah, the monitor we, uh, that did? We did? We did a test with uh a fake return status code of 205. Uh, yes, but during the incident four days ago, because uh, at that moment, the UI was down as reported by uh, the user. On the I, I remember, issue. Stefan, you said to me uh, the that alert I, was triggered. Uh, yes, I, and I thought you would receive a lot of, uh, of pager, but I forgot that on holidays you will not. So I'm assuming that I received you... some, but too much, and I didn't check that part. That yeah, that's what read. That was read in the, exactly. the Datadog. Uh, that was read, time. and I saw that uh, you folks handled it, so I didn't check in details. Um, so if you checked and you are sure, no problem. Otherwise, don't hesitate to check the Datadog because it has a month's history. Nothing is deleted, so we can still change the time span of the Datadog, and you see if it was read uh, during the incident. I will do both, but I'm I'm pretty sure I did. Cool, great job then. So that was the two other elements. And that's all for the fully closed element. Did I forget a task that you closed that weren't mentioned or that are not part of the work in progress? But that was still being done during the past week. I don't think so. One, two, three, okay, cool. Let's jump on the work in progress. I've tried to set the priorities while preparing just, these notes. Maybe yes. Maybe just uh, in the done thing, uh, the fix for the uh, retrieve of, of the next uh, draft oh. release. Good catch. Um, when there were, 
it's not normal, but uh, we've got many situations where we had uh, many next uh, draft release and uh, the script used uh, in our pipeline and uh, Jenkins Maven CD action workflow, we're returning uh, all of them in a multi-line string, making the pipeline fail. So I fixed the GQ expression to to retrieve only the last one. But we still have the problem of multiple next release to to fix or to find a why it's the case. Um, there is no help desk issue related to this. Yep. The multiple issues. Um, okay. Do you mind creating one, but yeah, not no close it? Mention uh, mention the link I've put on the notes, because as you said, we still have to fix the why do we have multiple next release. Um, I will put the explanation on that one. I uh, share that on the private channel and uh, at least with Stefan and Hervé. Um, to summarize, it's because we have different events triggering the release drafter on GitHub Action. And sometimes since we create uh, releases and update them, it sends multiple triggers that can happen concurrently. I've opened an issue on release drafter to explain the case. Uh, we most probably have on short term to add a kind of lock. So we streamline the builds for release drafter on each repositories. And on long term, we should stop triggering release drafter from GitHub action and put everything under our Docker or any release pipeline library. So that shouldn't be that much work because it's a Docker image with no JS uh, one shot commands. So writing our custom shell library for Jenkins so we can run it from a shell library will allow us to control the full flow because right now we have Jenkins and GitHub working concurrently. That's not the most prior topic for now, unless uh, it's blocking us. Let's see if the lock uh, unblock us for short term. But if you're interested in writing shell library, that could be a great exercise. Any contribution, welcome. Thanks, Ari, for taking care of that annoying part because it was blocking um, all our Docker builds since two weeks. And it was anotized. So thanks a lot. Other topics that we fixed and I, I forgot. Okay, so work in progress. Mirrors Jenkins IO, sunsetting mirror brains and uh, consolidating our mirrors infrastructure. Blog post published. Thanks a lot, folks, for uh, helping reviewing and publishing. Um, the date is uh, this Thursday, 19th, where we will switch the DNS to the NuGet Jenkins IO. And then in the upcoming days, we will start removing mirror brain pieces from our uh, assets, virtual machines, puppets, documentation, etc. Digital Ocean email sent. So the cluster is, as we said last week, has been stopped. We can stay five months in that step before really running out of credits. There isn't any builds handled by Digital Ocean since last week. And we, the email has been sent with the team in CC to Digital Ocean marketing people that we were in contact with. Uh, the Jenkins board has been CC'd as well to the email. So now let's wait for their answer. Either they say no and we can close the Digital Ocean tooling and area, or they say yes and then nice, we can start build the game. No question? Next topic is depreciation of depreciation of some uh, Datadog annotation that helped us to use Datadog to PageAudit integration. They have been replaced or changed, I don't know. So Eric, do you mind updating us on that area? I didn't have a lot of time to look at it, but uh, yeah, um, I've looked in uh, Datadog and uh, there is an active page of the integration, but it seems uh, one way only. And I, I have to check, uh, maybe contact uh, page of the and uh, ask them uh, if we can try it and if we can benefit from it as an open source project. 
I don't know. Okay. And all these years, there were another solution uh, proposed in uh, Datadog uh, deprecation notice. So I can look at also at this one, this other one. Okay. Are you willing to keep that item in your area and work on it next week, or do you want to pass over? No, it's okay to continue on it. Yes. No question on that one? Uh, mirror in Singapore. So uh, status is we are still retrieving data from different areas. We missed sometimes to do it properly. Um, we need to retrieve and write a runbook to have a standard location where we have the, let's say, the information to pass along to proposition to spawn, spin up a mirror. So Hervé and I are still allocated on that part. I mostly have to search my history. Still okay to keep that uh, thing or someone else want to take over or you want to pass it over? We can, I can keep it. Uh... Okay. So let's put it on work in progress next iteration. Jenkins, build our own Windows image. So thanks a lot for the huge work you did on that area, Hervé. Um, I've broke some things on Packer images that you had to fix. Uh, I was working on other areas. We, were, we did a lot of templating. So now the Windows images are using chocolatey or on the verge of using it. Uh, that will allow us to have a, more feature parity between Linux and virtual and Windows virtual machines. I understand there are still some work in progress. Is it okay for continuing this week, uh, Hervé? Yes. Uh, I don't have any more blockers. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a case of uh, the um, container, uh, the CST tools from Google. Uh, to test uh, uh, the image, but uh, mm -hmm. since uh, they are uh, uh, completely dependent on the Linux or Windows uh, uh, target, so mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, testing if uh, Windows um, version exists, uh, run it, and if not, uh, skip it. Okay, let's skip on Windows. Is there any question, blockers, things to mention on that topic? No. Okay. So let's jump to the two next one around the Terraform uh, for Oracle Cloud. Um, we have three steps. The first one, mandatory and required, is to initialize a Terraform project on the backend and the credential. So we can start managing Oracle with a Terraform provider like we did for Azure, DigitalOcean, and Amazon, and Datadog. Once that one will be created, that's a kind of implicit tasks that could be part of any of the two issues that are on the milestone. Then in parallel, we have to first prepare a new virtual machine for updates Jenkins IO. That won't be used immediately, but we, we need to provision it then with Puppet and test it. Um, the second one is to import the actual Oracle Cloud resources that are that have been created manually by the team uh, one year ago, and to start managing them uh, with Terraform using the Terraform import command. There is at least the archives, the Jenkins.io virtual machine with its data volume. I assume some security groups around. I remember we had a second virtual machine. I haven't looked at that. Mark, do you remember if we have another service on Oracle Cloud? We have several. So, so okay. for instance, I'm borrowing some capacity there to run small agents for my private private server for my private test Jenkins. Okay. Um, do you feel like these machines can stay out of the automated management or do you want us to manage them with Terraform? No need to manage those with Terraform. Okay. Uh, we can have a mix of both. The important part are the persistent services or the services that need management from anyone from the team. So archive is a candidate. I don't know if we have others. Yeah, I, th I saw it. Are you sure archives is unmanaged? As far as I knew, it was managed. It's not Terraform managed. Oh, not Terraform. I see. Yep. Well, so we certainly want it Terraform managed, yes. And if 
if the unmanaged things that I've got out there are in any way a distraction from the team, let me know and I will destroy them because mm. they are they are just there serving me as as small machines that I use for as agents. Okay, since it's used for most of the time for its check of releases, that makes sense to give a community credit on that area. That should not be an obstacle for us to manage the rest. However, for the person that will take that, uh, that task, uh, please ask Mark for validation when you see a resource that you think should be managed by Terraform, double check with Mark and the rest of the team just to be sure that uh, it's okay to let it uh, be managed from the UI and not imported in Terraform. So question we want to take uh, one of these tasks. Because right now it's allocated to Hervé and Hai, but I don't know. Stefan, are you interested in pairing with me on importing the unmanaged Oracle Cloud resource? Of course, I'm interested. That's right. <laughs> I'm forcing myself not to answer the question because of course I want to do everything. Uh, <laughs> compared to the task you would have in the upcoming days, taking an account that will travel, do you think it will be compliant with your tasks given you close the lot? It, it, it's for you because if you want to pair with me that uh, have to be either in Bruxelles or, or when I'm home, so so it will lock you during my travel. No problem. Uh, so let's get started on that one, if it's okay. That Perfect. will involve creating the project. And Hervé, if you're okay, we delay the from scratch machine for you once you will have uh, the rest. Is it okay for everyone on yep. that that way? Yeah. Okay. The from scratch machine. I'm sorry, I don't get it. From scratch. Uh, you say you had some code on Terraform. You open a pull request. Oh, and once you did create a new machine. A from new scratch. service. I'm it's sorry. You're still impossible. talking about Terraform and and to uh, provide new machine. Okay. Um, two other tasks. CI Jenkins IO. Sorry, folks. With my two days off, uh, I totally lost track of uh, merging and publishing the reports that we did with Bezil. Uh, since we didn't add any outage and that Brazil acknowledged that um, there is no danger for CI Jenkins IO, the, that's only a risk of a build having to wait. So it's an irritant more than a blocker. Uh, that's why we didn't press it. And uh, aside, Brazil has a lot of tasks, so we didn't add that much time to uh, elaborate on the uh, issue reproduction. So I propose we delay until next week. I will take care of finishing this done report, sharing it, so we can close these issues and start a tracking issue of the task that we want, so we can start prioritizing. Is my understanding of the situation correct, Mark? Do you agree on that area? Or Stefan, yes. you were there? Yes. Yes, yes, too, yes. And last work in progress is auto-notify people based on service routing rules. I assume it's a issue management task, Hervé? Yes, uh, work in progress too. Okay. Um, but the uh, goal is to notify, uh, to ping uh, people of uh, many or all uh, people of uh, teams, depending on uh, the service selected in issue. Nice, nice improvement that will help a lot. Okay, just one look at the incoming task first. Um, and the new important, Hervé, you mentioned Archera. We discussed yeah, with I, them. Yeah, we don't have a help desk issue. I don't know if we should open one. Yes, uh, can I ask you to open one? However, just a reminder, I'm, I'm asking you to challenge what I'm going to say, but for me, it's really low low priority even though it's a partnership we doesn't accept uh, the tip like we should use spot virtual machines on aws and we should try to pay upfront to reserve some uh, hypervisor to run our vms um, it sounds like their way of helping cloud user does not fit on our model we still want to try things for them but we have clearly more important areas and since we are not able to finish our task for now I don't I, see priority on that area. No, but I think uh, at least uh, 
they said uh, the activation of their services service was uh, quick. I think uh, if we could send them uh, data, we they can uh, already have something to work on, and it won't take us much time. I think. Okay. I don't. Uh, yep. L let's let's say okay. We add to current milestone this one, and I propose the following rule of thumb. If the help desk issue about Archer, if we are not able to work on it in the free upcoming iteration, so the free upcoming weeks, given all the things we have to do, then we can tell them we don't have time at all. Because we need to put, to either tell them so they won't stop waiting for us, because I don't want to, to annoy them too much. And if in three weeks we don't have much more time on that area, that means we don't have the bandwidth. That, Does it that... seem a good showstopper for you? sounds fair to me i think if it, it, i don't think we're doing them any harm by not engaging with them but if we can't engage with them in the next three or four weeks it's fair to them to say hey we apologize we've looked at it we just don't think it's a great fit right now and I, in that area i will take that role of telling them great since i'm the one proposing to the to stop i don't want to put any of you on that situation well, you are also welcome to pass that to me damien i'm the one who started the the investigation with them and it's that's also fine for me to go back to them and say hey we're sorry our, our workload is just not such that we can do this this ex exploration right now so thanks Eric, is... for taking care and thanks mark for proposing ah i've blocked my mac um on the upcoming important elements, uh, there has been a, a raised issue from a user on Jenkins IO um, that uh, I've opened about adding a permanent HTTP redirection from the old Jenkins is the way.io to stories Jenkins IO, because most of the link that you can find on the internet or in Jenkins.io website itself, most of these links are broken. Most of the time it's an old blog post, for instance, that triggered the issue. So the proposal is to add a single ingress rule on the public cluster. If we're able to point the Jenkins is the way out domain name to Kubernetes, then we don't even have to build a Docker or a web server or whatever. Uh, Kubernetes will take care of the redirect for us. So Kubernetes would then serve from stories.jenkins.io any request for Jenkins is the way.io. That sounds exactly. great. It because uh, you can create an ingress rule with the correct annotation, which in fact will use the ingress nginx or ingress controller that will create a virtual host for the domain uh, Jenkins is the way.io, if we can point it. And that will answer HTTP permanent redirect with the, you can customize the, the code, 302, 308, 301, whatever you want. And you don't need to create a Kubernetes service or a Kubernetes deployment behind to serve whatever, you just need the ingress rule. So it's a kind of uh, easy redirector managed and that should be quick to do. Is there anyone interested in taking that one? Do we know easily where, where, who is uh, owning uh, Jenkins's the way.io and where is handled the, the DNS? Yeah, Alyssa, Alyssa, Alyssa Tong has ownership of it and can help with uh, questions about who the who the DNS provider is. Stefan, by asking that question, you just design design it yourself a volunteer. Yeah, that, that, that's what I aim to so, because uh, if it's okay since it's Kubernetes area and you're willing to uh, to grow on that area, um, you can I assign if it's okay, you are assigned to the issue, you can bump on me or Hervé uh, on that area if you need technical help. Does it sound good for you? That's perfect. That you have the right to say no, to and it's you. not a problem. I know, I know, but I want to say yes to everything. So yeah, go ahead. I love it. Um, on the infra next topic, are there main things that you think will fit the next iteration, given everyone will be traveling to Brussels, uh, except Mark, Monday and Tuesday? That's, uh, do you see other tasks on the infra uh, here on that milestone or on the pile of tasks that we have that you think is important to add to the milestone as a let's work on it?
Okay, so let's get started with the current work in progress. As a reminder, if you are able to fulfill all the other tasks, then you can take issues on that list. It's a kind of back burner. Pick the one you want to work on uh, based on your own interest. I like back burner. Okay. Um, is there any other topic you want to mention for this week? Nope. Okay, so let's stop the recording for today and the sharing screen as well.